Hello, and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play more Aurora 4X. All right, I, uh, I don't know how I missed this. I, <laughs> you're right. Uh, it's right there. Uh, power required one. I, I, I don't know. I swear I read through all of these, and I was like, I don't know how, how much power does it need. Uh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, we have no reactor power. Power required one. I do not understand why this is power 16. Well, I don't know why it says power here. Is it talking about engine power? Probably. But it shouldn't just say power, if it because power can be misleading when it talks about like power here and like power here, like what ah, words. Anyway, so we're gonna go design a small reactor. I don't think that we need to have um, really extra extra power. I don't know. I mean, let's let's just try it. Go to power plants, pebble bed reactor technology, no reactor boost. Size is gonna be looks like 0.4, so that we have a power output greater than the amount of power required. Um, it's gonna have apparently one crew, so suddenly our <laughs> our fighter. Oh, we're looking at the discovery right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and do the pebble bed reactor technology PB-1 create. Uh, we'll go back to the Viking. I want to see how many people are actually on this damn thing already. Twelve crew. What? It's supposed to be two people. But okay, 315 tons. That's a little bit bigger than like the Tie fighter that I had in my mind. 315 tons. That's a big ship. Um, is there anything we can do to make this thing smaller? Percent of total is the 10 centimeter C1 infrared laser. It's huge. It's freaking huge. Nine people just operate the laser. Um, oh well. Also, we should probably tack a little bit of armor on this thing. Like, uh, it doesn't add a huge amount of weight. I don't want to put too much, but just like, you know, a little bit. You know, I want it to be able to handle, like, a hit. I'm thinking the more of these things we get out there, um, getting shot at, like, if they can absorb a couple missiles, that's good. It's good. I like it. So, anyway, uh, we're going to go and get that research out of the way. It's going to be, I think, under power and propulsion. It's going to be the Pebble Bed Reactor Technology B B PB-1, 40 research points. Uh, we do have people who specialize in this kind of thing. We do have two available labs right now. 4th of August. It's fairly quick. Um, you know, the sooner we get that thing done, the sooner we can knock out a... Start getting them being constructed. So let's try to get this thing down to... Uh, off one single five day tick. So the 20th, today's the 16th. Perfect. So we'll go five days. Also, um, the overall. I don't know if I've heard this song before. Battle Scene 2. Okay. The overall power um, planetary protection value of that ship is only three, but the amount of required protection on Luna is not very much. They only want like 13. So we build like five of these ships, and they're good for now. Apparently, five of these little things is going to be fine. Okay, so we go back to our ship. We go back to the Viking. We go to design view. We find our power plant. We throw the pebble bed reactor technology on there. And now we have no more design errors. Um, reactor power, one. Power required, one. PPV of three. This design is classed as fighter for production, combat, and maintenance purposes. I don't know how fighters deal with maintenance. Do they not have to have... And you'll fair rate. I mean, is it supposed to actually have engineering spaces on it? Makes it a lot bigger. I don't think that you worry about it, right? It probably gets fixed. Because look at the speed difference. 2200. You throw engineering spaces on there. Cuts a lot. I think that they just get repaired in their mothership. Deployment time of three months. 37 days of full power. 7.2 billion kilometers. It's not very much, but it should be enough, right? They're not they're not gonna be in combat for a month. They're gonna be in combat for days, hopefully, at most. And they just come back to the mothership. So I wonder if we can actually go smaller. I think there was fuel storage tiny. It's gonna be under No. Here, fuel storage tiny, 3,000 points to research that. Holds half as much fuel. Make the ship faster, fewer, slow, you know, smaller range, but potentially could, uh, could save us some space. I don't think we worry about it. I think we just print it, you know, let's, let's publish, let's do it. Uh, so the Viking class fighter, I think it's ready. 365 tons. Let's see, if we had 1,000 tons is what I think each bay holds. So divide by 365. Unfortunately, we can't quite hold three of them in one of there. But, you know, we could find, like, a, a multiple of a thousand that that multiplies into pretty well. I can just do 365 plus 365, so... 
I want to get one that's like as close to... That's pretty good. So seven bays could hold 19 fighters. That's fine. I mean, whatever. You know, it would be neat if we could get it to like exactly 250 or something. Or I mean, maybe make it bigger, go up to 500. But no, we'll just make it as is. On Earth, we have not yet started our fighter factories, but they will be capable of knocking those out. So on the 24th of September of this year, a couple July's, uh, June, July, October, what? October's not before September. <laughs> July, August, September. Two months, we will have the research lab done, then we'll make a couple fighter factories. Um, they're not going to produce, I think, too much, but these things are not expensive, right? They cost 29.8 build points, so we're going to be able to make them pretty damn quick. Hopefully. And what are the actual, like, resources used? I've already forgotten. Uh, where would we see it? Over here. Mostly Duranium and Galacite. Some boronide. And a tiny, tiny bit of corundium. Okay, that seems fine. Also, there have been some comments in the previous video about how we don't currently have any uh, fuel production. We only have 10 billion, sorry, 10 million liters of fuel in storage. So we probably should also knock out uh, a few of those fuel refineries. I don't know, let's start with like 10. And somebody had also commented that it might not be a bad idea to do like 90% of our factory, like, Capacity being used on doing things, and then 10% just always being used on making more construction factories. And I kind of like the way that that works. So let's do, like, just queue up something high, like a 1,000 at 10%. And then we'll move that up to the top. We will uh, modify U to 90%. We'll do that on all of them. And so now we should be able to queue you up, get you started. So now we're making construction factories and research labs. We'll just always be spending 10% of our construction power on increasing our construction power. So that it'll always be going up, which will probably be a good idea in the long run. It's kind of like doing a shipyard with uh, continual capacity expansion. Now one of the things someone had mentioned that I really like, the advantage to doing continual capacity expansion is that the mod, like the rate that the shipyard can build is dependent upon how big it is. And so when you do continual capacity expansion, every five day tick, it's, its capacity to expand goes up. So it has this exponential curve to it where doing these incremental like add 10 tons, it's nice if you want to hit a specific number. But generally speaking, continual capacity expansion is just going to be the best way to go. Um, you get the, the fastest growth overall. So um, I don't know why we're going up to 20. Uh, no, I do know why. There's a guide that I found on how to build, like, a missile fleet, and it uses 20,000 ton military ships, and it looks pretty good, and worse comes to worse, if we end up fighting aliens soon or something, and I'm worried that we're gonna lose, I'll probably copy that missile build, and we'll just make those, those ships, and see how they do. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive guide on how to build missiles. In fact, I can pull it up if I really wanted to, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Uh, let's get our research labs being used, get them all back over to Wiz. And it looks like uh, reactor boost power. I don't think we really need to do that very much. 20 engine power nuclear pulse engine. Huh. 20 engine power nuclear pulse engine. I don't remember what I designed that one for. I've forgotten now. Look for racial tech. Engines. Right, okay, okay, it was the 25% increased strength one. We were going to throw that into the Viking. I forgot about that. Okay, well, let's wait five more days. Then we can go to our Viking. Yeah, okay, so 16 power. Costs a tiny bit more. Same size, same crew. Yeah, I think we're going to do this. We can see the difference uh, between these on what? The fuel use indicator? Yeah, let's go. Maybe if we look at it in here, we can compare them. I don't like how you can't click at the top of these to actually organize. So it uses, like, 
nearly twice as much fuel. That's fine, though. I don't think there's any problem with that at all. Like, the range is a bit excessive here, anyway. 37 days of flight is too much. Okay, so yeah, let's strip the, uh... 16 engine power one. We're gonna go from 2191 up to 2700. I don't know if that's fast or not. It doesn't seem fast. I mean, maybe. It certainly increases the build points of that ship. 29.8 up to... Oh, never mind. I thought it went from like 20 to 30. No, it's barely any increase at all. I like it. Okay, that's done. And we can go back to five-day advances after we get our research labs working on something else. So, yeah, we'll keep on working on this. Keep knocking those out. And let's go back to just five-day ticks. Hey, construction rate 16. All right. Excellent. Well, all of a sudden we have more construction rate. Very good. Uh, fighter production might be nice. Although, it, at this point, maybe just having more fighter production factories would probably be the better way to go. Um... If I'm doing my math right, I believe we're going to get 100 build points per fighter factory per year. So, the production rate... I mean, if that's that's basically how mining things work. So, if we have two of them, we should have 200, which at a build cost of 30 should knock out like six of them a year. Which is not very many, but it's enough to, you know, within one year we'll solve the issue on Luna. Assuming that they can still provide their planetary protection value, even if they're not in a mothership. We haven't designed a mothership for them. They're just, you know, gonna sit around Earth for now. One of the drawbacks to fighters is that you can't actually, like, over overhaul them or refit. So, I think these ships are gonna rapidly become outdated, but that's okay with them. I'm, I'm fine with that. Exchanges to shipyards, such as adding slipways and capacity or retooling, 5% less time than normal. It says time slash cost here, and down here it just says time. Is it also going to save the actual cost? Because if it does, that's it's pretty significant. Our best bonus is with Wiz in construction production, so I'm very, very, like, interested in doing this. A ship component that allows a ship to perform at the same task as an automated mine. I'd like to get this, sure. I like that idea. Okay, we got some more freighters and stuff. It's fine. They are really launching a lot of ships. I could... I, at them, some point, I might turn off civilian ships on here. Alright, we got the reactor boost thing. I think he had something in his queue, so he should start working on... Yeah, minimum engine power modifier. Could be good. We have another final, I think it was the final research lab. So now we have uh, 30 research labs at this point. Let's check wealth and trade, make sure we're doing okay on income. Um, total expenses is now in excess of our income, so that is bad. Uh, shipping line subsidy. Okay, so that's temporary though. That was me giving money to the shipping industry. Hmm. But we're still losing money even without the shipping lane subsidy. Okay. Well, I think we have to hold off on doing any more uh, research labs for now, which is fine. Okay. Uh, what was there other else to do? We're now starting production on fighter factories. Construction of fighter factory completed on Earth. Wow, that was fast. Unused fighter capacity. Production rate, 27.3. Huh. Okay, so it's not nearly as much as I expected. Oh, you know what? I think I was thinking this. Yeah, I made them, I made them oh, 10 times stronger than I thought. They don't produce 100 per year. They produce just 10. 10 per year. So with 27.3, we can barely produce one per year. We're going to need a few more fighter factories than that, so where can I see, like, I want to just see how many we have. Are they going to be over here, probably? Yeah. So I don't want two, I probably want, like, 20 or 50. Let's add 48 more. So fighter factory, 48 more. 
At 90%. Create the job. We'll move it up the list. So fighter factories plus construction factories. Now, as far as um, creating the ships, I think what we do is we go to fighters. And we've got the Viking class. And let's order up, you know, I guess... 100? I don't know, 100 at 100%. So now our fighter factories are making those. They're expecting these 100 Vikings to be done on the 1st of February of 2153. So you're saying it's going to take a while. Why don't we why don't we just shoot for I think they're going to they're all going to come out one by one. Oh, and we can actually say new fighters go into a task group. Uh, why don't we create Earth Defense Fleet? We'll say new task group. Rename For now, it's going to be fleet, even though they're fighters. I'm assuming that they can still, like, do stuff. So we go back to industry. Uh, let's send them to Earth Defense Fleet. Modify. Now the question is, maybe... Um... Oh, that, that was fighter... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Modify industrial project for fighter factory. New fighters. Why is it listing it there? On like non... Like when I click on automated mine, why is it talking about those? I guess that's just where they'll automatically go. Is that maybe what's happening there? Whatever. Anyway, um... Vikings. Yeah, instead of 100, let's just queue up like 10. And we will get them built out a little bit quicker than it says because we're building more factories. Now, I remember watching uh, part of Quill's campaign, and he built a PPV, a planetary... Uh, I can never remember what the damn thing stands for. PPV. A PDC, Planetary Defense Center. And it provided defense of Luna from Earth. So I'm hoping fighters will do the same thing. They have launched another civilian ship. Research into max jump squadron size has commenced. We have finished minimum engine power point three. Viking 001 has been built on Earth and assigned to the defense fleet. Wait, is that why you pause the game? You're not going to pause every single time. Every single time I create a fighter, are you? Oh, if so, that sucks. Because I'm assuming we're going to make a lot of these things. Asteroid mining module's done. I feel like Wiz should knock this out. We can do that pretty damn fast. It's getting 12,000 research. We can do this in three months. We can 20% increase our fighter production. Well, let's go to that task group then. Uh, the Earth Defense Fleet. Currently, uh, senior offers Rear Admiral Alfie Kent in the FTR fighter Viking 001. Maintenance clock 0 0.07. Task Force training 0.05. Point five. So I think because he's just sitting there and I haven't given him any specific orders, he's automatically doing task force training. Um, but if I did this, would that just kind of force them to stay on task force training? Do we even do we even need to do that? Let's just not do it. Let's just leave them in defense of Earth. The fact that it's accruing a maintenance clock is kind of a concern. Um, I'm surprised that... Uh, I mean, Earth has... The capacity for a 1,000 ton maintenance. Maybe because it's a fighter, it's not classed as a ship. Do we need, like, sh sh fighter maintenance? Infrastructure. No. I guess because he's on training, that's what's rounding up or taking up the maintenance clock. And then maybe when he stops and he's just on, you know, vacation or whatever, it'll be better.
I think I think we're okay. I think we just leave it as is. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, damn, it's gonna every single fighter is gonna pause my game. That's annoying. We can test that theory by looking at this thing and see how they're doing on task force training. And yes, they are at different levels, which means that they are just automatically doing task force training. Um, each each ship should have its own pilot in this task group. Offers within task group, Rear Admiral, Commodore Rachel Campbell, Average Fleet Training, Total Fleet Mass. Yeah, we just gotta let them train. I'm Again, I'm highly annoyed here that it's gonna pause all the time. We have discovered max jump squadron size. I suppose if I do 30 day turns, we won't get paused quite as often. But it's not as efficient. Five days is the optimal period of time to get the most stuff done. You know what? These fighters are actually coming out a little bit quicker than I would have expected. So we have six now. As there is no longer any cause for unrest on Luna, the unrest is decreasing. So yes, Luna is being protected. Requested protection level 17, actual protection level 21. And that's coming from those fighters. Um, that are just actively, you know, training up and stuff. So we would need a ton of them to actually probably do anything. And they, they seem to operate the same as any other ship. Like if I wanted to, I could probably just tell them to like move to another asteroid. Um, which is interesting. F6 shows us individual units. No fighters, we can take those off. That's very useful. 2700 KM... 2739 KMS. The go-to was pretty slow, and I've already forgotten what our, uh... Wait, didn't I end up doing a... A new ship? Wow, we're still building this thing. Yeah, it's like two years to build the damn thing, wasn't it? Oh well. I guess I'm okay with it taking that long, because it's going to be a very useful ship. Mars and Luna are both starting to get back their unrest. They were up, up to... down to 67 on Luna, and Mars looks fine. Okay, what was I going to do? Research, right. Research on Earth... Well, we have the capacity to make a a mining ship. Now, how does a mining ship work? Cuz if you don't have a mass driver, how does it how does it work? I don't I don't know. Uh, let's let's go see. Um, we have the capacity to add stuff to ships, so just out of curiosity, uh, if we were to go to our majestic, which is nothing. Uh, let's do new and we have a classification for minor. We could create our own if we wanted to. Right down here. Uh, new hull layout. So, worst case scenario if it's not in the list. Mine layer. Mothership. <laughs> reminds me of uh, Homeworld. Maintenance vessel. Alright, well I want to look through this list because there's got to be something. Asteroid Miner. There we go. Asteroid. Apache Class Asteroid Miner. That's a bad name for it. Fletcher Class. Shark Class. Guardian. Essex. Valiant. No. Okay, it's apparently not going to give me very many names. Uh, well, we'll rename it ourselves. So, we'll call this the, um... The Rock Digger Class Asteroid Miner. Hmm... So do we just automatically have a option on here? Or do we have to research it? Asteroid mining module. Base mining rate, 10. Do you think there's separate research for asteroid mining modules versus the automated labs? Because when I had researched in construction production, mining production, 14 tons. So we already have 12.
Or maybe it's just saying that that's the base amount. So for 60 corundium, you get effectively one mine. A regular mine, if you were to construct it, is also 60 corundium. But you don't have to spend the duranium. But then again, you gotta pilot the ship and you gotta build all the other stuff. But presumably, it saves you the cost of an automated mine. It would allow you to do equivalent cost of having a regular mine there minus the duranium. But the duranium is probably gonna end up getting kind of caught up in the cost of the actual ship itself. So, but they could potentially break even pretty quick, it seems. And I don't know how easy it would be just to move them around. Let's just try building one just to see what happens. I have no idea what to expect. So yeah, the Rock Digger class ship, it's going to be a uh, civilian. Um, let's just try to make sure that we only use commercial-only components. So we want to put an asteroid mining module on there, which is apparently size 100. So we put 10 of these things on here. Build points, 1,500. Okay. That's quite a lot. Tanker. What's a collier? Ammunition collier. When a fleet reloads magazines during a turn, they will reload from the magazines of any colliers in the fleet. Okay. Huh. Size and tons just is pretty convenient. Keep excess Q. Conscript only, because it's, you know, it's Rock Digger. I don't think that it needs to have... Well, actually, maybe... Maybe the mining bonuses could apply. Let's not do Conscript. Alright, so we need engines. 2,500 size engines. We might as well use the... I should obsolete the 100 EP ones. Well, let's go do that. That's going to be under Tech. Engines. The commercial, this one, we want to obsolete this tech. I believe. Because it's just a strict strict downgrade from the other one, yeah. Get rid of him. Okay, rock digger. Design view. There's no design errors just yet, but we gotta work some of this stuff out. It's very slow. It's fairly big. I mean, we could throw more engines on there. Do we need to worry about deployment time? If it's going to be commercial, I don't think we do. So we don't have to worry about morale. Unless morale affects mining rate, which would be horrible. I'm going to try... I have no idea, really, how much fuel to give it. Let's try to give it, like, two years worth of fuel. It's very slow, 280 KMS, but it doesn't need to be fast, because once it gets there, it's going to spend most of its time just sitting there. Ten modules producing 120 tons per mineral per annum. Hmm. Okay, so if it's producing 120, we can see then that it is getting the bonus of our mining rate. It's getting the 12. Even though it said base mining rate 10, it's actually getting 12. Okay, so that's good to know. It's not like... It's not that like they're going to be an inferior mining uh, machine. They're actually going to be equivalent. I wonder if it'd be worthwhile to to put together even more, like a better, a, a different engine with even less engine power, just that's more efficient, so that it doesn't have to have quite as much fuel storage. No, I don't, I don't want to... If I constantly re redesign everything every time, it's just never going to get done. So let's just throw more of these things on there. I want to go up to like 150 tons. Wow. 6.8 billion in two years. 
so slow. 30 asteroid mining modules. Build points 4,433. Can we build asteroid mining modules? Is it considered a ship component? Yes. So we can use ground production to make these things. Oh, and apparently they do cost duranium. They cost the exact same as a regular mine. Hmm. I thought that the duranium didn't... Was it because it doesn't show the duranium? Ah, excluding duranium, yeah. Okay, so we're not saving the duranium. That feels too slow to me. Um, I mean, we can build up to this size. If we wanted to repurpose that shipyard, the big the big one, 210 in fact. It's currently classed at the go-to. I'd like to probably get more shipyards so that I don't have to constantly repurpose them. We should just have like one shipyard per ship type. And you know, only only change the assigned class when we are going to obsolete the design. Instead of just constantly only being able to build one type of ship. 4,433.6 build points to make this thing, and the shipyard itself has a 1,200 mod rate. So it's going to take four years to build one miner. That feels too long to me. So we strip some of the asteroid mining modules. We go down to, like, 20. Yeah. Oh, I was like, wow, why did that make such a huge difference? It's so fast now. Right, because I still had it on selecting 10 at a time. We didn't go from 2 to, to 4, we went from 2 to 22. Derp. I just wanted to try putting like 2 more on there. Now it takes it a year to get there. The thing is, does it does it need its own mass driver to like launch the stuff home? Or... You know what this is probably going to do? This is probably just going to mine them on the rock and then leave them on the rock. I don't think it's going to do any any kind of shipping. Also, this is a lot more convenient than looking at the build points, isn't it? How long it takes to build. Hmm. Why on earth does my build time in years go... Is it faster when I add more engines? The more engines I add, even though it's more build points, it's saying it's going to take me less time to build it. That makes no sense at all. I'm going to go with four engines, 20 asteroid modules. We're going to call it good. And I don't think we're actually going to make the go-to. Build cost 23. 23, 3, 3.9. Wow, that seems really expensive. Might be because the slip yard, slip yard, slip way is too, way too big for that ship. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. We're going to stop continual capacity expansion. We have 20, 210,000 tons of available slip way. We're gonna make this ship that size. And then we're just going to leave that commercial shipyard alone. The next commercial ship I design, I'm going to build my own, a new shipyard just for that, that ship. So let's get this guy up to 210 tons. And if we just have to throw more modules on there, and then that's what we do. Too many. Is 
Is it going to consume fuel when it's just sitting? I don't think it will. We're at 164 tons. Oh, I didn't mean to do power plant. Two ten two hundred. Nope. This might be a horrible ship, I'm not sure. It needs the ability to go kind of far away. 14.8 billion kilometers. We could always send a fuel ship out to it. Alright, it's, it's good enough. We'll go to the BMW. We will retool for that. And then we're going to just pretty much never... Whatever, you know, it costs whatever it costs. It's going to take four years to get there. And I don't know... I don't know if it's a good idea to make ships this way. It's probably better just to launch... Uh, automated mines places, but it's an option. And the w the main reason I want to do it is I'm trying to learn the game, and at the same time I want to do things that are different, right? I don't want to just recreate Quill's campaign. Like, I want it to be different. I'm trying, I'm intentionally trying things that are different just to see, you know? Like fighters, instead of just making missile ships, and, and doing this, you know? It just seems interesting to me. Anyway, um, so that started. We have a lot of inactive research labs on Earth. What had we, uh, what have we researched recently? Fighter production, 12 points. Well, this would have been nice to have ahead of time, but... Total expenditures are now less than ex uh, less than income, so we're doing great there now. And now that we're not doing continual capacity expansion, uh, here let's just do one thirty-day turn. Construction of Viking is completed. Construction of fighter factory completed. Now we're making some more. We're actually making automated mines now, which will be useful. Um, but actually, I think we need. I think we need the fuel refineries first. Alright, so these two are working. We'll knock out the fuel refineries. June of 37. It's going to take one month to make those. It's not very many, but it's just, it's just enough, hopefully, to keep the fighters doing alright. Alright, cool. Um... I want to inspect the... Capacity recharge rate 2 is started. Check the task group to see how they're looking. It's going to take them a long time, it looks like, to, to train up. Maintenance clock is running up on these ones. I wonder if there's a way that I can, like, tell them to just, like, you know, take a break. <laughs> just stop training, you know? Because I didn't tell them to train. Maybe they'll stop training automatically when they get to 100% task force training. I don't know. All right, I'm going to take a break here, though. I'll uh, see you again tomorrow at the same time in the same place. Do leave your comments down below if you think I'm doing things better, different, worse. If, if there's things that I'm missing, then, again, feel free to comment. I am only recording one of these each day, so I do look forward to seeing what your thoughts are. And I'll see you again in the next video. See you soon.